is Alex and I'm a sassy dispatch girl. A lot of you know me already by my classes, by my looks, and today we're gonna discuss another topic which is very popular in trucking. We're gonna talk about factoring. Why do we need factoring? What is factoring? What should you ask your representative? How you should negotiate your rates? Does it make sense to switch the factoring? And what you need for your company? What is your company needs? What is the recourse, non-recourse? What are the uh, extra hidden fees you need to know about? All of this we're gonna discuss right now. So keep watching and I'm here to help. Let's continue with our factoring questions. So you are about to open trucking company and maybe you already have trucking company and you have factoring or maybe you do not have factoring. So what is the biggest question about factoring? Let's see guys if I can help you to figure this out. So what is factoring? At what questions should you ask when you talk to any factory company representative? Let's see. First, we need to understand why do we need factoring? Well, if your company needs a boost, if you need to get money faster, you need cash flow because money are making money. You do not want to tie up your money assets because with that money, maybe you can buy extra trailer, extra truck. Maybe you can rent a warehouse. Maybe you can lease parking spot or whatever other needs you have in trucking. Maybe you just need to keep that extra 20, 30,000 on account in case of repairs or some emergency situations which we get in trucking a lot. So my suggestion is do use factoring company. And factoring, it's optional. It's up to you. But if you would like to have that cash flow really fast, you will need to consider third party provider, which is a factoring company. The one who is gonna give you money faster for buying your invoices and they're gonna wait. They're gonna wait for broker for 30, 60 days, sometimes even 90 days. But choosing the right factoring, it's a big decision because you're gonna sign something for at least a year. So let's see, what, what do you need to know? Well, factoring is a form of alternative financing. I'm stressing this again. It's just a third party provider, just picture. Someone has money and they would like to make money with giving you money faster. Are they gonna do it for free? Of course not, it's business. Like trucking business, we charge for delivering the freight from A to B, broker is charging someone for organizing the movement from A to B, finding the carrier. Same is factoring, it's a business. So what they have, they have money. They have money they can give to us and of course they're gonna charge some percentage, some fees. And it seems like why would they do that? But that's how they make money. Does factoring even uh, exist just in trucking company? No, uh, brokers use it as well. Some factory, uh, for example, production, they use it. They maybe have invoices to make 100 new Teslas they need factoring they need to make them before they can receive money for selling so factoring is not just a um, common factor for trucking industry so we're gonna call them factor or factor company whatever it is nowadays we have lots of them happen they advances money on the invoices what does this mean that means that today your truck is picking up load let's say in uh, Auburn, Washington. By Friday, he's gonna deliver it somewhere in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
you have your bill of lettings with a stamp. It's already becoming POD's proof of delivery. And let's say we'll choose a um, well-known uh, company. Let's say TQL. Well, TQL has three options. They can pay you quick pay. And I don't believe I didn't check lately because I do have factoring. Maybe they charge uh, 5% next day or maybe even same day and it's going to be higher six seven percent it depends on uh, um broker you're working with their fees going to be different or if you want to wait for 30 days they're not going to charge anything and you will receive it by mail or maybe ach it depends how you got set up when you did initial setup with tql coyote ch robinson gen pro all all those brokers the question is can you wait let's say load and today we had a load which was paying 7200 to columbus to philadelphia they were paying 8500 so you have 8500 sitting there can you wait i mean if you have a lot of money on your account and you would like to tie up that money maybe yes you can wait 30 days or would you like to pay five, six, seven, eight percent for the same day financing? Kind of a lot, right? It adds up. So in this case, we're gonna consider factoring and we're gonna have a flat rate and they gonna give us money faster. So this is speeding up process to receive our money faster from third party. And factoring is going to wait, they're going to invoice TQL, they're going to invoice, uh, invoice Night Logistics, they're going to invoice all those brokers, and they're going to wait. Why are they going to wait? Because they have money. They can afford to wait. And for waiting, they will charge us fee. And fees are starting from 1% to sometimes 5 6%. It depends on your agreement, on factoring, on the volume you have with your company and of course all of this you can negotiate remember one thing like you negotiate loads every day with brokers you also can renegotiate some agreement charges even if you start with someone and you don't like something and i will give you example when i started a long time ago when i just uh, opened my company five six years ago I started with uh, Foley Carriers. They actually just got sold out to Love's Solution uh, Factory. But when we started, I did not like the way they were charging the minimum invoice. Then if I would decide to change, they would charge me some fees. And all of that was an initial agreement because I had no experience. So after a few months, I was seeing some charges which I did not like, you know, some uh, reinvoicing charging, uh, AC charges were higher, those minimum, minimum load charges. I didn't like $30. Okay, sometimes we do short runs and we take load for $400, for $600. So I believe I, I needed to have at least $800 load for me not to be paying $30. I didn't like that. So what did I do? I contacted their department, I talked to them, and I ended up talking to the owner of the for one of the CEOs of the Foley, and we made different agreements, which were good for me. So before I switched to someone else, I was trying to get what was good for me, what was uh, good for my company, for my growth, and I renegotiated. So remember, in trucking business, we always negotiating for loads, for factoring, for fuel. We negotiate with our drivers for their uh, uh, salaries. We negotiate buying equipment. So it's all about getting the best deal, which is good for you, but getting smart deals, deals that is not gonna cost you lots of money and mistakes. Today, as I told you before, it's a lot of factoring choices. When you're gonna register that MC, or if you already have one, you probably are receiving million phone calls. Even when you take a load from bigger truck, uh, bigger brokerage companies, they already have factoring as an option. 
So let's say you book in a load with England Logistics, probably in a few days, someone from England Logistics is going to call you and say, well, we see that you're using Love Solutions. Would you like to switch? We offer this and this and this. Please do not jump your guns. You always need to understand if you're switching, does it make sense to switch? Are you going to save? Because are you going to save money? Are you going to get better service? Because usually as a salesperson, they can uh, tell you whatever you want to hear. So you need to do research before you switch or before you sign up that first agreement. Well, some factoring companies are great and I am not going to be throwing names here uh, because in dispatch service we do have a relationship with few of them which we are represent and um, they are tested by my own company but the companies I build companies I dispatch and help to grow so if I give recommendations to anyone it would be in a private settings and I will see what I can offer you to help you to grow future Right now, I'm just talking in general about the factoring. So no really negative or positive about any factoring, just information for you to understand. Some of them are gonna be excellent in customer service, in uh, how efficient they are. While some are gonna don't have the technology yet, you know, they are catching up. So all this, you need to know before you going to ask. So most of the people think, well, I need just the lowest uh, percentage taken from me. It's going to be the best deal. Remember, lowest percentage sometimes is not is the best solution for you. You still need to do your research because it can affect your business maybe they're not gonna be helping you with collecting those loads which are not getting paid maybe they don't really have efficient way of invoicing the brokers so lower percentage sometimes is not the thing you have to look for you have to look at this as a whole picture okay in this equation that percentage is not number one thing you should be worried about. Questions you should ask a factory company. You work with a representative. You ask them those questions. And if you cannot get explanation or they do not answer, or maybe it's not clear enough, ask them again. Always compare one, two or three fa factory companies before you decide who is the best for you again. And always compare one, two or three fa factory companies before you decide who is the best for you. Question number one. What are your fees for one? What are your fees and terms? This is the first question you should ask because a lot of them they're gonna tell you well we charge two percent and you compare it to somebody who is charging three percent and you're gonna say wow this guy is a better it's two percent i'm saving money but maybe factory company with those two percent has a lot of hidden fees and it's a lot of them so please make sure you ask how much is your money transfer how much you charge for wire? What is your ACH fee? What is your software transition fee? Do you charge per invoice? What is your reinvoicing fees? Do you have those or you just do it for a flat fee or they already included? What is your minimum invoice charge? Remember, as I told you, I had that problem. They would charge $30 if the load was uh, less than $800, which is nonsense. We are in Chicago a lot of times. We do connect short loads. Milwaukee to Chicago, we never did have a uh, home empty. Why not to make extra 400, 600 bucks? What is this charge back? So if broker did not pay and they charge back uh, from other loads, are there extra fees? If you need to check on a broker's uh, credit or history, 
are they gonna charge you per request or is this included those hidden fees are there okay and the terms are very crucial usually nowadays it's a one-year term but if you are trying to sign up for more than one year make sure that you really look at the flexibility of this agreement because if you're not happy you will need to exit out of something which is not beneficial for your business so make sure that it is flexibility for you to change to different factory or exit this agreement you need to talk about it and usually it's gonna be tiny tiny prints which is gonna say that you will be charged per truck or flat fee or maybe months of the fee so believe me they are not gonna tell you upfront unless you ask this question and if it would be me I would ask that question in email not just verbally you want to make sure that when you look through the contract they highlight for you how long is it for what is it gonna be fee if you're gonna uh, change earlier or if you're gonna quit working with them because usually uh, companies who have renewal let's say you sign up for one year and you sign up October 1st well guys in that little tiny print it's gonna say unless you give us written notice 60 or 90 days prior october 1st of next year we are automatically assuming then you're renewing the contract so if you're not happy with them and you would like to switch and today let's say uh september 17th you're not happy you're already working with someone to else who is gonna provide you factory needs usually if they experience they will gonna ask you when is it expiring if you do have to give them notice but let's say maybe they don't really care if you have to pay fees. they just want to switch you because they still want to make money business is business believe me it's not that many honest people in a business and it's um it's a uh, very competitive so people do promise a lot of things which then they do not ful fulfill ask that do i need to get written notice how many days in advance and do i want to continue with you can we negotiate and remember this good agreement it's always should be beneficial for you because if you grow if you add in two three four five trucks and your volume is going up then your breakdown your tiers of charges should be less yes they have volume so they're still making money on you but you should benefit from this and it's all about negotiation so make sure you revisit you talk to your representative and if your representative say nothing can be done always contact the management believe me they do not want to lose your business and the best way to do it shop around and see who has a better option see if they can give you kind of per approval and this is the best negotiation skills you go back to your factory company and say listen i have this abc factoring and they're gonna give me this 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 and this can you match can you lower to this and usually usually they will work with you because it's better to still keep you and make money on your invoices than let you go so remember negotiating it's always a key in tracking business what is the second question should you ask do you offer recourse or non-recourse factoring well this is a big big problem nowadays lots of brokers go out of business same as lots of trucking company goes out of business because of the situation been happening with the covid and all other challenges in market prices trucking uh, have been facing hard times for the last six nine months right now market is a little bit better but still it's up and down so it's always some brokers 
some companies which are gonna be going out of business. It's gonna be some shippers, some receivers which are gonna close their door and not to pay their invoices. So this is a part of trucking. It's a big, big risk of maybe one day not receiving payments for what you did. In our case, not receive payments for movement of the freight from A to B, from uh, A to C, and what, whatever you did, you, you had agreement, you had rate confirmation, broker agreed to pay you, maybe shipper did not pay to the broker, and he the broker did not get paid, now you're not getting paid. So this is something which some factoring have as a non-recourse and recourse factoring. So what is the recourse factoring? This is the most uh, common and it means that your factor is that your company must buy back the invoices that the factory company is not able to collect. So let's say they gave you payment for $10,000 for two loads with uh, some company, I don't know, uh, one to three brokerage. I'm just coming up with the name. One to three brokerage uh, is going out of business. They file in bankruptcy or they just don't want to pay invoice. They don't have money, whatever the situation is. But factoring gave you money right away. They waited 30 days, they waited 60 days, they waited 90 days. And now finally they realize that one to three uh, brokerage is not going to pay for this load. So recourse factoring means that factory is going to contact you and they're gonna charge the money back from whatever loads you're submitting today. And in some cases, they're still gonna charge you maybe some fees for charging for that load which they paid money. So the difference with non-recourse factoring means that factoring company assumes most of the risk if somebody's not gonna pay for the load. But Believe me, it's not that easy because everybody would choose non-recourse factoring, but they have a lot of stipulations, okay? It has to be a load with broker who had a good credit. It has to be something that you were not supposed to buy from no, no buy list. So it's a lot of different tricks, believe me, because they don't really want to cover that. So. Uh, if for you to decide that recourse factoring is going to charge 2% and non-recourse factoring, for example, is going to charge you 3.5%, you're going to pay that extra 1.5% in hope that in something's going to go wrong, they're going to be covering for you. Well, you need to calculate. So take your calculator and see how much volume you're doing and how much money would that be for you in one year? So if you have volume of 100,000 and that one and a half percent is going to become, it's going to become this much. So should you take a risk or you're going to hope that they going to cover for this? And a lot of factory companies offer uh, both options, non-recourse and recourse. So it's all about that percentage and for you to understand. In this case, you should ask them, what steps are you guys gonna do to collect that money? Do you have a special department? When are you, are you watching them? Do you have the collections department which kind of watches the brokers if they're not paying? Are you sending them a no-buy list? Do you have app where I can check before I boot out? So this is a lot of things to do with booking with a good broker. And we, as a dispatchers, we always check credit scores on a board. We also, if you do have factoring, usually I have it on my phone and I do check if they are approved. So good dispatchers do check, but sometimes things can go wrong. Broker can be good today and a week later they had some challenges and their rating went down. So things change like a snowball in trucking business. But understanding of recourse and non-recourse, you should um, have it clear. What does this mean? Earlier, non-recourse does not necessarily protect your company from risk. 
because usually it's gonna be some extra stipulation and I am telling that's one more time not because I'm repeating myself just because you really need to discuss this before you choose factory company question number three you should ask your um, factory before you decide to do business with them what other services do you provide fuel cart maybe discounts maybe you do fuel advance maybe you pay 50 percent up front after we get loaded because sometimes maybe you have a truck breakdown and you need that extra two three thousand dollars today do you offer back office support do you have same day wire um, availability what about referral bonuses what if i like you i used to refer a lot of people to fully um fully factoring I, and i uh did a homework and i did shop around that's why i personally make contact with few companies which i'm gonna be representing as an agent because i am kind of person who goes and learn from inside get the most benefits and i would like to be in control of those decisions so also you can ask about customer collections how they gonna do that process also credit checks no buy list are they gonna provide for you daily are they gonna be charging you for those credit checks every time you're gonna put different amounts question number four can your company help me and match with my girls because you start with one two trucks few months later you have five trucks maybe you will have one truck for a few years sometimes company grows so fast that they start with three four trucks by the end of the year they have 20 25 trucks so you should ask representative are you guys willing to help us grow guys what is your um, what is your uh, background how long you've been in business what is your largest client what is your highest invoice amount per month you guys should ask those questions because you should know who you're dealing with remember when we book the law they ask us about our mc they look at our safety score they ask us how long you've been in business actually they can see it from safer so we also have to check on brokers we also have to check on factory companies because this is important relationship and special with all the agreements it's not something you can switch that easy without losing money you maybe call a few companies who use them and you talk to them do you guys like working for them how fast are they on answering how good are they on solving problems uh, it's way easier you don't have to create invoices send to factoring right now nowadays i love factoring which they have online invoicing you click you attach you submit one click it's done you can see transaction you can see how many loads are not uh, paid yet so you can monitor that but some factory companies don't have that fast or maybe that upgraded service yet so that's something you need to also consider also consider do they need all those originals believe it or not i am against all of that nowadays i don't know in my company all my drivers are able to do a good scans very clear very readable because everybody has fancy phones so what is the need of me collecting all those originals and i am okay with that because i can just save them in my office in my company storage but for me to go and send them to the factory company every time first of all it's extra money secondary then they need to store them somewhere what is it gonna do they just gonna uh, probably just scan them again and save them somewhere i really think that it is a waste of everybody's time plus let's save the planet you know we don't really need to use more paper we don't really need nowadays we are able to invoice via software and i too you should ask and you should ask them to show you how easy it is going to be 
Are you able to do it from your phone? Or does it have to be just desktop? Are you able to put uh, all the loads in one, um, in one entry? So all those questions you should ask. And the best way for you, for them to send you demo so you can try it out. And if you like it or not. For example, me, I am pretty picky. If I don't like the colors and I don't like that it's too many things I need to enter, probably I would not choose them. You know what? I don't have that much time, so I would like my invoicing be fast. How do I treat you as a customer? What, is, what do I mean by this? Well, the number one thing, you do not want to have five, six, seven, representatives for your company because when you have a problem you're gonna call one person mike why didn't we get paid why is this load short paid and you called monica is answering well let me get back to you you called it our time nancy is answering well i don't know mike was working on it so at this point before you sign you're gonna ask them am i am going to have a single point of contact assigned to my company so you know, for example, that um, Steve or Ashley are your representative and you contact them directly by email, by phone, they monitor your account, they help you out in the beginning. I think it's crucial to have that customer service towards you. You do not want to just try to call 1-800 number all the time, click on all those 1, 2, 3, 4, be on, be on hold, then get disconnected, leave messages over and over and over. So please make sure that new company can provide that for you. This is a customer service because you need your money fast. Don't be afraid. If you do not get along with somebody, or maybe you have a hard time understanding because we do come from different backgrounds. For most of us, English is a second language. Maybe you can ask if they have uh, 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 multilingual representatives, and a lot of them they do. They do have uh, Spanish, uh, a lot of them Polish, Russian, Ukrainian. They have... Uh, they have other languages available, so maybe they can connect you with somebody who is speaking your native language. If not, then ask for somebody who can be more patient to you and who can be explaining to you better because sometimes personalities do not click. So don't be afraid to ask. You're paying for service. And if something is not there for you, make sure you switch it should be always always beneficial to us not to them so hopefully guys you enjoy this uh, video my vlog and I hope to see you in all my classes remember we have dispatch classes IFTA classes we have private classes we have zoom setting classes we have real practice also, I would like to make an announcement. We are adding every month, one Sunday, we're going to be doing webinar via Zoom. And remember that your success is our mission. So that new class is a class for people who are trying to open tracking company. And it's three hour seminar. And uh, it's only $149, believe me, you're going to get so much valuable information about how to open MC, how to open a USDOT, what is UCR, which factor in what to choose, which mistakes not to do, which uh, paperwork do you need to have, agreement for owner operators, for alcohol and, um, and drug uh, clearing house, what steps do you need to do before you go and pay the $300 for MC? How to choose the right insurance agent? And I'm going to give you recommendations, some names, some links, and some paperwork after that webinar. So it's three hours intense, but believe me, it's worth it because no one wants to tell you exactly how to do it. 
and no need to go pay somebody thousand dollars to open your MC. It, you don't have to pay two hundred dollars to get your tax ID, guys. You can do it. After my webinar, you're gonna save at least fifteen hundred dollars. So please join me. I'm gonna send a link under the video. You can always contact us. And remember, learn dispatch today at gmail.com. I wish you happy and safe trucking, smart trucking. Let's make money. Always yours, Alex, your sassy dispatch girl. Thank you for watching and I hope you subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, Learn Dispatch Today, as well as our Facebook page, Dispatch Training Center. You can also find my private profile and let's change this industry one person at a time.